Hello and welcome to a Build a Soil product infomercial. We're going to do these short videos to make it easy to understand what the product is used for and why you might buy it for your garden. We do other videos with a lot of content and education. This is basically a sales video. If you have questions about this product, that's why this video is here. So uh, we have two aloes and right away that causes some confusion with some of our customers and they'll message us and say, which aloe should I buy? And usually they've already decided they want to buy aloe. So I'm going to start there and then we're gonna discuss the two types of aloe vera powders that we carry and why they're in a powdered form, why you might use them. Aloe vera has been known as one of the first medicinal plants in human history. It's been around for a, a, a very long time. A quick Google research will find hundreds if not thousands of benefits from utilizing the aloe vera plant. In organic gardening and permaculture, one of the things that we look to is instead of buying traditional fertilizers, we look for things that come from plants and have secondary benefits to them. These are the compounds plants create as far as their own medicine and have traditionally become medicine for humans. So when you slice an aloe leaf, it immediately goes to protect that wound and heal the plant. That creates a synthesis of chemical reaction that's organic and done within the aloe and is reproduced nowhere else in nature. It has no pests, it grows phenomenally well at the equator, and it's been used for a number of reasons. One of them is because the gelatinous texture of it has a number of amino acids. It has a number of secondary hormones that are good like salicylic acid. Other properties that you could fill up a laundry list of big words that mean a lot of good things for the human body as well as for plants and for soil. So a lot of people grow their own aloe vera plant. They'll cut a leaf off, they'll put it in a blender, and then they will take that water and they'll filter it right into their bucket of water and water the garden. And it works really, really well. Some people will cut the inner filet out and believe you should only use the inner filet. And this is something that comes from human digestion, not from the plant community. And so we're going to discuss why we have two products. And I think when we're done with the video, you'll have a basic understanding of which one's good for you, if not both, or why. So the first product we offered was this one, and it's my favorite texture. It is the aloe vera powder um, flakes. We, car we started off with a powder. We moved to their water-soluble flakes, and we kept both on the label just in case there was a problem with availability. Reason being is that the flakes are only available on seasons of harvest of the aloe when there's the most amount of rainfall. It's a secondary product. They make the powder, and if, if everything's right, they have a small batch of these flakes that they can prepare. So for us to scale, we couldn't use this product any longer. Now, that's now. Before when we made the change, there was still availability of this product. We were looking for something better for the garden. That's why we made this product and believe in it. But as far as keeping this around, it's because it's limited availability and really high quality that we do. The other reason is customers demand it. They like this product. It um, is dissolvable in water. I'll show you the texture of this so you can see, and then I'll talk about this one. This is only the inner filet. That's the big difference. And the main reason is this is made not for the garden. This is made for human consumption. We don't recommend eating ours because, you know, we, we don't make this in a food grade facility. But here's, I'll put it in my hand. You can see what the flakes look like. They're flakes, they're not powder, and they dissolve in water very easily, and people love that. I'll put that here for comparison when I put the next powder to it. Now, if you've seen the inside of an aloe plant, that's what it looks like. It's a gelatinous texture. The other thing that's beneficial about this is it's freeze-dried, and it's a 200 concentrate. When you're buying nutraceuticals or extracts of a single plant, the concentration level can be 10 to 1 or they have all these different ratios. And when you get to 200X, that means that one gram of this and 199 grams of water will produce full concentrate of what it was. So this is a freeze-dried full extract. It's like the hash of the aloe plant. It's very pure. The reason why we moved over to this product is because we were introduced to Dr. Coates, one of the godfathers of aloe. He wrote a book on it. In that book, there's a lot of research. Come to find out, the first person to use aloe in agriculture on a larger scale and he came to find a lot of the viewpoints that we had, except for he took it further. They had a tomato farmer that was near somebody who grew aloe and they would take all of the waste and they would put it on their tomato field and they had some of the best tomatoes that anyone had around. And so legendary that the story got out and because Dr. Coates was in the aloe, he had to go see. And that eventually started them thinking about the other benefits for agriculture. Now, I didn't know this. We were already carrying an aloe product and now I found the godfather of aloe who had had all the patents and already sold those old patents to the new aloe companies that are running his old process while he's continually creating new processes. And in the aloe world, when you research it, there are thousands of years people have tried to lock in stasis the benefit of the aloe plant instead of from the fresh leaf, and it's, it's almost impossible. And so freeze drying, and not only freeze drying, but the best freeze drying, and also harvesting the plant in several conditions. 
the ideal way to get the most medicine out of the plant is to have the most secondary compounds in production. That typically happens at a four to five year old, fully mature aloe plant growing as near the equator as possible in its full health, vibrancy in the soil, in the sun. When you harvest that and you process it the same day, immediately after harvesting and you freeze dry it, that's how you lock in the most amount of nutrition possible besides the fresh plant. And arguably better than maybe the Home Depot start in a little clay pot, because this is mining the sun and mining the soil and doing its job to maturity in large size. Those types of plants are what's in this bag. And instead of just the inner filet, like over here, they actually do parts of the whole aloe leaf. So parts of the part that you're not legally allowed to sell for human consumption. Once I realized that aloin was not allowed to be sold for human consumption, that there's some restrictions on that in the health industry, that led me to understand why the aloe inner filet is so highly revered when you look it up. The parts of the leaf that are not just in the inside actually can create uh, like a cleansing effect. And you can see the color's different and it's a powder. The difference here is that we have more than just the gel, so it's not going to create the same texture. You have part of the whole leaf. The reason why this is done is that when it comes to agriculture, about 70% of the benefits of the aloe plant live in the whole leaf and parts that are not in the inner filet. Of course, the inner filet is easier to digest, but that's not the only reason that we use the aloe plant. There's a number of reasons. And when you realize that cutting the plant, causing the injury, creates the secondary metabolites, and it needs to be in full sun on a mature plant and then immediately freeze dried, that's why we have these two products. It's a single ingredient, they're both freeze dried. Normally when you get a whole leaf, there's a lot of inferior fake products on the market. They have whole analyses out there to detect whether it's real or fake, just like olive oil. It's a big racket. So you can find some cheap aloe vera powder that are not what they claim to be. And when you find a really good producer, it's important to take note of that. And both of these are the best producers in the industry. I think this one's better for agriculture, but a lot of people say that they like how this dissolves in water and they get huge benefit from it for foliar spray, for cloning. This I use 100%, this is what I use. I haven't used the flakes since we introduced this product, but some of our customers swear by both. They get more filet, they get a little bit of the outer, they can balance the two together. It's totally up to you. I don't care how you guys use them. I'm just wanting to give you the story behind it so you fully understand why we have two products where they came from. I even tried to only keep this product because I feel it's better for the garden. A lot of people got used to this and they wanted us to keep it around. So we carry both. We usually only talk about this. Now when you're on our website, you'll fully understand why. As far as the texture, you can see the difference. They both dissolve in water pretty easily. One trick with any of these powders is to give it some time. Instead of trying to force it to go into solution, if you use like a wetting agent like our J Plant Speaker, Qyaha, or some Thermex, it does help. But once you put it in water, it takes just a little bit of time. And after a few minutes, it'll easily go into solution. So I hope that trick helps you. Beyond that, I'll go over the recommendations because in the beginning when we designed this product, we based it off of Clackamas Coots recommendation to use about a quarter cup of aloe filet for a gallon of water. So it says foliar quarter teaspoon per gallon of water, container garden quarter teaspoon per gallon of water, 50 gallon barrel, four tablespoons. And that's about a quarter teaspoon per gallon. That's based on that ratio. Now, when we go over here, it's a lot more specific and it says one teaspoon per gallon. And so people were frustrated saying, look, if you found a better potency, higher quality ingredient, why are you saying we should use more? It wasn't from a marketing perspective. It was because this was anecdotal information based on form um, sharing of information and using. This was based on hundreds if not thousands of studies at the college level using specific ratios of aloe vera, spraying it on full crops like rice and citrus and everything else that you can think of fully documented. This is the ratio that they came up with, so we followed their recipe. And so use it for what you're worth. That's why there's the instructions on the back. It's only a teaspoon per gallon of water. It's very, very potent. A uh, little bag lasts for a very long time, and it's not something you need to use with every watering, although a lot of our customers swear that the coconut and the aloe are two of their like secret products that make their end product that they're growing better than others. So I hope that helps. If you've got, got, if you've got questions, this video will be on a product page on build a soil, but it'll also be here on YouTube. It's just a sales video or an infomercial, but if you have questions about this, it'll help us better understand your needs so I can communicate them. Please drop your questions in here about aloe and I'll be happy to answer them. One question that we always get when we discuss the aloe, once people find out that we carry it and inevitably they do a little Google research, they start finding about how wonderful the aloe plant is and they start asking, well, do I have to use the powder? Do I buy this? Should I buy the leaf I see in the grocery store that's right there fresh? 
Should I grow my own aloe plant? Is there a better way for me to do this now that I've realized I want it in my life? We feel this is the absolute best way. And there's reasons that I mentioned, like harvesting a mature plant grown near the equator. They say the further from the equator you get, the more aloe powder it takes to be effective. I think that's part of Dr. Coates' story over decades of understanding this. But the gist of it is, harvesting the same day and freeze drying is a great way to preserve it. Growing your own is another phenomenal way, but a lot of people aren't living in an environment where they are near the equator and have the ability to grow a mature aloe plant. There's probably still huge benefits to growing a small aloe plant in your grow room in a container of soil with basalt and all the stuff that it can kind of mine, and it's for sure gonna create some of the compounds that we're after. So if you have uh, the choice of no aloe or growing your own aloe, absolutely grow your own aloe. Blend it in the blender. You're gonna get huge benefit from it. I love doing it. It even feels like better than using a powder, but it may not be as good as a mature plant grown at the equator, freeze dried. So just consider that. This is certainly easier to use, especially at scale. So that's one of the reasons why our customers use this instead of constantly cutting leaves on their aloe plant. That's up to you. Some of our customers do both. The other consideration is that when we're looking at using a powder versus using our own, some people bring up those leaves in the grocery store. And I would say that's the one you wanna avoid it the most because when you compare how much is in here, so in this bag, 16 ounces, this is one pound of powder. This actually represents 200 pounds of fresh aloe leaf. Even on our smallest bag, this one ounce is 12 and a half pounds of fresh aloe leaf. And it's significantly cheaper than the grocery store. So if you were to go get 12 and a half pounds of those aloe leaves to be able to have an ounce of the refined powder or that much use, so to speak, for one, it would go bad because the leaf needs to be used fresh. Uh, for two, that's a lot more money. So it's not as responsible use of the resource. And three, those at the, at the get are not good because they are harvested le you know, more than one day ago. So they should have already been processed and used. And they've been sitting and refrigerated and shipped and now they're on the shelf. And who knows if they're sprayed with pesticides. Like I would not recommend using those leaves. They're not economically feasible. So grow your own. And if you wanna really experience all the benefits and use more than you could probably use from one plant, get a powder so you can have a high, high potency. Like I mentioned, this one bag, I think this is four ounces, that's 50 pounds of fresh aloe leaf. It's hard to get that much off of a couple of house plants. So many considerations, as always, we always agree with growing your own, but there's reasons why people use the concentrated powders that are freshly freeze dried. Freeze dried is the most important part. And I've referenced maybe doing your own Google research is because you're gonna find a lot of beneficial reasons for the aloe plant. And I try and not make claims on our product because Anytime you're in agriculture and you want to make a claim, it's very important to back that up. The aloe plant's been around for thousands of years. It's already backed up all of its claims. And there's tons of people that are aware of the benefits of aloe plants. And so instead of talking about our product, let's talk about why anybody would use aloe for the purpose of gardening. Aloe has in it all the amino acids that are on our list, all these expensive amino products that we use in very, very good ratio. It has all the trace minerals and it has all these secondary compounds that are um, when you go to the garden store, you can buy what are called plant growth regulators. And in nature, we usually call them plant growth hormones. PGR is the bad one. PGH is usually the beneficial one. There's a number of them. Alfalfa has triacanthanol. There's a guy that's famous for discovering that and using it. It's beneficial in agriculture and they make concentrates of it. Same thing with aloe vera, salicylic acid, and some of the other properties that are in the aloe plant become a two-way benefit for the garden. One, they provide some sort of baseline of fertilizer use, right? We're talking about grinding a plant up or using it as essential building blocks to fertilize in the garden with. But number two, instead of just being happy with it being a fertilizer, it has all those secondary compounds which we've realized nature uses in synergy. And one of the things you'll learn when you start studying plants is that they have a salicylic acid and jasminic acid pathway. And a lot of gardeners as they get more advanced are curious about what that interaction does, how those pathways work. And a lot of people have found that using plants that are loaded with these secondaries produces a better result in their garden across the qualitative side. Maybe not increasing the yield two to one or anything crazy, but making a healthier plant that is able to produce its own secondary compounds in better ratios. That's what we're all looking for from quality. So growers that use the coconut, the aloe, whether it's build a soil product or not, that's what they're after. Better quality plant, a little bit of fertilization, but mainly these secondary compounds that could potentially stimulate, stimulate their cash crop to be better than it ever has been. A lot of this information that we picked up in finding Dr. Co Dr. Coates was spent in hours of phone calls with him. 
it's really good information, but it's available to anybody. You don't have to call him and talk to him on the phone. He has a book, it's called The Silent Healer. I've mentioned it on several blog posts because people were talking about growing their own aloe or the potency of it and all these different things over the years. It's been a talk, topic of argument and that Silent Healer book goes into, I think it's like 600 pages, I mean it's thick, and it goes into using it on your skin and healing horrible medical conditions as well as using it in the garden. So phenomenal book. You can just Google it. We used to carry it here. I'm not sure if we, if we do any longer, but I wanted to at least let you know where I got a lot of the information that we're basing that off of. Do your own research. If you have information on why you use aloe, you want to share that, drop it here in the comments. I'd love to answer any questions. Thanks for following along and we'll see you on the next product infomercial.